All right, we're ready to go with the next section of chapter three. And you'll notice we're zooming right along going through here. So uh, the first heading or the what I want you to put up here is 3-3, interpreting graphs and tables. Okay, that should be at the top of your notes. And then your learning target for today is kind of wordy, so feel free to pause the video if you need to while we're going through this. Okay, so it's kind of twofold. One is that you're going to be able to interpret information from a graph or a table. Okay, so we're just going to get the data and you're going to be able to look at it and kind of tell a story. And the second thing, then kind of going vice versa, is you'll be able to make a graph given some information and then use that to solve problems or interpret what's going on. All right. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff on this screen, so stop freaking out. Here's what I want you to write down. This uh, top part, the heading, which I'll get this silly thing out of the way. So where it says matching situations to tables. So put that up at the top. Okay. And the only other thing I want you to write down is right here for car one, car two, and car three. Okay. Car one, car two, car three. Now this table, believe it or not, looks like a bunch of mumbled jumbled numbers, but it's really telling us a story. <clears throat> it says it gives us the speeds in miles per hour of three different cars over a certain series of time. So let's take a look. Car number one's story. As time progresses, it's traveling at 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. Then all of a sudden, five minutes later, it's 30 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, and then zero. It means it stopped. All right, let's look at car number two story. Car number two is going 55 miles an hour, then 50, 50, 55, then 50, okay? And then finally, car number three, traveling 55 miles per hour, then only going 10 miles per hour. Then we're stopped, stopped, not moving at all. And then all of a sudden, now we're back at 55 miles per hour. So our job that we're gonna do today is kind of take a look at some situations and see which one matches. So you're interpreting I see what's happening. So here's Mr. Lee. And Mr. Lee happens to be traveling on the highway. And then he's being very smart. Not like most of the drivers I see. He actually pulls off of the highway, pulls over, and then makes the call on his cell phone. Then he gets back on the highway. Smart man. <clears throat> All right. Now, which one of these cars fits this situation? So he's traveling. He pulls off, stops, makes the phone call and then resumes traveling again. So as you look through each of these three, which one works? And you should pick, ding, ding, ding. Looks like car number three. We're traveling, we slow down, stop, stop. That's when he's making the phone call, and then he's traveling again. Car number three. All right, so you can just put on your notes here that this one is Mr. Lee, okay? And right here, this is where he's making a phone call. All right, that makes sense. All right, next on this one, hmm, what's happening here? Well, this time we have Mrs. Healy and she happens to be driving on the freeway between one o'clock and one twenty. and nice, she encounters absolutely no traffic. So she gets on the highway, just cruising right along. Which one of these situations fits that? Well, as you look through it and interpret it, you're looking along, there's no stops or anything on here. So Mrs. Healy is car number two. Okay, so this was Mrs. Healy. This was Mr. Lee. Now that leaves us with car number one. We haven't used that one yet. So what's car number one story? Could you think of what's happening as we're traveling along at 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, then 30, then 30, and then dead stop? What could be a going on there? Well, here's one possibility. Car number one starts out on the freeway or on the highway and traffic starts getting more congested. Okay. Lots more traffic. Can't go as quickly. 
And finally, there's a big old traffic jam and we have to slow down and stop. Complete stop. That's what happened there. One possible answer. Okay, so you see how this isn't really, you know, cranking out numbers doing computation. What we're actually doing here is trying to figure out kind of a story or a situation that matches the information that you're given. Okay, so that was matching situations back here to a table. Okay, matching a situation to a table. Let's take a look at what happens <clears throat> when we're trying to match a situation to a graph. All right. So here's a graph, okay? And it says which car in example one corresponds to this one. So if you take a look at the graph and notice I have speed here on my vertical axis. Down here for time, I don't really have specific time intervals, but I can kind of see what's happening here. I'm starting out and I'm somewhere between 50 and 60. Frankly, it looks pretty close at 55, okay? Then, looks like I start to decrease, and for here, I'm going steady at about 50 for a while. Then I creep back up here, a little later on to 55 again, and then I'm at 50. All right, so as you look at that picture, which one matches this particular, or I should say, which car matches this one? And I'm going to zoom this up here now so you can see what's going on. Car one, car two, or car three. This one looks like, whoops, let me get this back on here and matched up. This one looks like it matches up with car number two. Okay, so this graph matches car number two. All right, let's look at another one. What's happening here? Ay, 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 ay. So I was at 55, and all of a sudden I have this dramatic slowdown at 10. Then here, I've stopped for a while, and then I zoom back up to my regular speed. Now, you can write numbers in there that make it fit, or you can just kind of play it by ear and say, well, which situation is this one? Well, here I'll pull our former table up here to see which car is matching this situation. Throw it right there in the middle. This one starts at about 55. Yep, <coughs> slows down to 10 and then nothing. Here you go, it's car number three. Okay, see how the data paints a picture in a graph this way. Cool. Here's another situation, look at this one. I have three different graphs here. <coughs> and it says, can you match the situation to the graph? So Jamie starts a race, okay? soon feels a pain in his muscle, like in his leg. Have you ever had that cramp up happen when you're running? So he's unable to complete the race. He actually has to slow down and stop, and he's done. He's not going on. Which one of these, comparing the speed to elapsed time, matches Jamie's situation? Is it graph number one, graph number two, graph number three? Pause the video. You make your guess. All right, did you make your guess? You should have chosen graph number two. Let's look at it again. This time, same three graphs, this time we have Melissa, and Melissa builds up her speed during the beginning of the race, okay? Then she maintains that speed for the whole rest of the race. So she starts off at a decent amount, and then she increases until she gets through the whole end of the race. Which situation is it? Is it graph number one? graph number two, or graph number three. Pause the video, make your guess. Ding, we're back. And this one, graph number one, should be the one you pick. Now, we didn't talk about graph number three, but what could have happened there on graph number three? You start out at a speed, then you slow them way down, then you go back up, and then you slow down, then you come up. I would say that would be a good situation or example of somebody doing some interval training. Maybe you're starting up fast and then you kind of slow down to a slower pace and then build back up faster, 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 slow down and go back up. Just one example. All right. 
Last but not least, we need to create a graph that will match the table. All right, so let's take a look at this. <clears throat> it says create a graph that illustrates the information on this table about the distance traveled during a family vacation. So here's the table. What I want you to do is draw two axes here, a horizontal and a vertical one, and we need to label these. Time, I'm going to put on the horizontal, <coughs> and then distance in miles is how we're going to label the vertical one. All right, now the time elapses from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So I'm not going to start directly at zero, but these are equally spaced intervals. It goes two hours, two hours, two hours. So let's make a hash mark. Call this 8 o'clock. Come down here, call this 10 o'clock. Let's call this noon or 12 o'clock. And then over here, 2 o'clock. All right, now the distance, this kind of thing, we, c we have to get all the way up to 580. Um, I do like to start this probably at about zero. So I know I have to get to at least 600, you know, or 580. So I'm going to go up here to 600. Okay, and then about halfway, that would be 300. And then divide these up into thirds. So this would be 100, 200. Divide this chunk into thirds. 400, 500. Okay, here we go. Let's see. So at 8 o'clock, we've traveled 280 miles. That's going to be approximately right about there. Okay. At 300, or at 10 o'clock, we've gone 320 miles. Mm, probably right about there. At noon, we've traveled 500 miles. All right. And by 2 o'clock, we've gone 580 like this. So it looks like we go like this, like that, and like that. And there you go. Now let's see if that matches what we've got here. Yeah. See if yours matches mine, I should say. Okay. All right. Now there's two things I want you to do. First things first, don't turn off this video yet. What I want you to do is get out your workbook. Okay. In your workbook, I need you to open up to page 20. What I want you to do, opening up page 20, okay, is pause the video, go through these examples. Then you're going to turn on the video again, check your workbook page with what I've got on here for your answers, and then I'll turn you loose on the assignment. So get your workbook open to page 20. Now pause the video, do the workbook, and come back. All right, you should be back on now, and here's what you've got. Check your answers on page 20. The first question, you should get dog number two best matches this situation. This one is dog number three. For three and four, when you're talking about which graph corresponds to which situation, this one is dog number three. Notice because you've got this stoppage here, some zero time, okay, and then it got really high again, and then it came down lower, okay, and then bopped back up. So that dog's going all over the place. For this one in number four, this one starts out, goes high, and eventually ends at zero, okay? And that best matches dog number two, okay? Finally, on this last problem here, what you need to do is draw a graph that best represents the situation. So let me get it down here. You talk about home, okay? It was 74 degrees at 830, so you got something like this, and then excuse me, you start plotting these temperatures and your graph should look something like this, okay? With all of these data points and the timelines put in place, all right? Now, this is kind of challenging, okay? Because it's not just a clear, direct answer, but this is what you're working on for tomorrow, all right? So, you've got your workbook page done, awesome. Your assignment for tomorrow is in the textbook, okay, 
pages 129 to 131, and you'll do 1 through 21, all of them. Okay, it'll go faster than you think. Good luck, and may the force be with you.